What do you want to do, huh? What do you want to do? Randy, don't. You better shut up, Standing right here, how do you want to handle it? I told you to shut up! This is Randy Marsh, voiced by South Park's creator Trey Parker. And there isn't a character in the South Park universe who has grown quite as much as he has. Sh Sharon? What is it, Randy? Do you have any- Oh, Randy! Will you look at that? Is that the biggest crap you've ever seen or what? For the longest time, Randy Marsh was often presented as an extremely normal parental figure and, save for a few episodes here and there, was almost never presented as a major contributor to the overarching narrative. This all changed in Season 9 when the writers of South Park struck comedy gold by putting Randy at the forefront of an episode that transformed this otherwise bland character into one of the most hilarious and loved characters on the entire show. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to Nerdstall if you haven't done so already. South Park is an animated comedy series that has been in production for almost a quarter of a century. What started out as a crudely animated VHS tape has grown into one of the most intelligent and accurate pieces of satire available for our viewing pleasure. From 1997 until now, South Park has anchored itself into nearly every facet of the cultural zeitgeist with pitch-perfect parodies and intelligent commentary on how we view the world around us. Part of what makes South Park so special is the fact that most fans of the show were like likely introduced to it at a very young age. In 1997, there weren't very many adult cartoons available, and teenagers at the time were tuning into the show religiously to see the adventures of Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman as they dealt with aliens, monsters, and other strange happenings in the podunk town of South Park. The first seasons of the show are fun, light, and weren't nearly touching as deeply on social commentary. As the show matured, so did the audience. And slowly but surely, we started to identify with not only the quartet of fourth graders, but also with the other citizens of South Park, none of which have come to be as impactful on the series as Randy Marsh. Randy Marsh made his first appearance in the second episode of season one titled Volcano as the town's resident geologist, whose ineptitude results in the complete destruction of downtown Denver. He's not really a standout addition to the ensemble, and he just sort of functions as a facilitator to an impending disaster. Shortly after that, in the episode titled An Elephant Makes Love to a Pig, it is established that Randy is Stan's father when he arrives home to discipline Stan for the behavior of his clone. From that point on, Randy Marsh slowly but surely develops into a larger character. In season two, he ends up temporarily divorcing Sharon, and in season three, he stops the town citizens from lighting themselves on fire with their own farts, and later has some really awkward moments with Kyle's dad in a hot tub. Maybe I'll drink a few more beers and see where the party takes me. Yeah! Was that your leg? Huh? Oh, you mean this? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was me. In these earlier seasons, Randy Marsh feels more like the straight man serving as an anchor point for the more ridiculous behaviors of the townsfolk around him. He delves into some awkwardness here and there. Oh, hey, Stan, could you grab me a beer? But he's never really at the forefront of narrative. We start to see a little more of Randy emerge throughout the next few seasons, but he doesn't quite break through as a standout character. Where most of the townspeople of South Park have gimmicks, large personalities, and distinct voices, Randy Marsh is often seen as just a normal, everyday father. More often than not, he kind of just shows up to tell Stan not to do something, or remind us that Stan has a family and his decisions have an impact on someone other than himself. This all changes in Season 9 in the episode titled, the Losing Edge. While Randy's transformation was definitely gradual, The Losing Edge is without a doubt the turning point for Randy Marsh's character. The writers don't waste any time getting to it either. Within the first two minutes, it's established that the boys are all in a Little League tournament that they don't want to play in. Childhood sports is a topic that almost anyone can relate to on an extremely broad scale. It's a well-known fact that in attendance to almost every conceivable children's sporting events, there will be a parent or two who take the game way too seriously. Competition has a tendency to do weird things to men sometimes, and sports can really bring the worst out in them. This is where South Park capitalizes on an opportunity to do something enormous with Randy. We first see Randy challenging another parent to a fight in the stands in a pretty ridiculous way. We've seen Randy in humorous situations before, but up until this point, he has never been seen as an absurdly aggressive drunken moron. While he's getting arrested, Trey Parker really turns up the gas on the absurdity with some really hilarious performance choices, and this sets the stage for what is to come later in the episode. Arresting me for what? I'm not allowed to stand up for myself? I thought this was America. Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Being an aggressive, drunk, and loud is portrayed as a source of pride for Randy, as he is congratulated by his peers while celebrating his victory in hand-to-hand -hand combat, 
rather than the victory of his children's baseball team. South Park utilizes the concept of mapping here to its benefit in developing Randy Marsh's character. We've talked about South Park's utilization of the mapping concept before. We'll place a link to that episode in the description below if you'd like to learn a little bit more about it. But the concept can be broken down as basically the exploration of one specific idea through an entirely different scenario's language and concepts. In the case of The Losing Edge, they are filtering the idea of fathers getting drunk and fighting at Little League games through the common trope of a somewhat classic underdog story, like Rocky or The Karate Kid. It's a simple yet effective way to not only drive the comedy of the situation at hand in a way that is very easy for us to follow, but in this case, drive the character in that same manner. A short montage is a really perfect way to raise the stakes for everyone, and focus on getting to the final moments of the story very quickly. It's only halfway through the episode at this point, and we're already at the Little League State Championship. South Park does a great job in this episode in treating the absurd as if it is completely normal. Jeez, I really wish this guy would shut up and the completely normal as if it is absurd. And they do it in a very over-dramatized way. Randy Marsh having his little moment of pride before entering the state championships is melodramatic to the point of being completely ridiculous. I don't like to really trash talk, but I don't think Denver has a chance. But this is an important moment to any underdog character in a story of this type. This is the midpoint to the narrative, the calm before the storm. It reminds us that this episode isn't even about baseball. It's all about Randy. In the next scene, we get the introduction of Randy's ultimate rival when Bat Dad enters the fray. Oh yeah! South Park is going down! Feel it coming! You ain't got a chance, South Park! Here we go, Denver! He is larger, louder, and drunker than Randy could ever dream of being. This is the moment where the bad guys are closing in, which frightens Randy and sends him into a deep, soul-searching moment that feels so familiar we can't help ourselves from connecting to the trope and laughing at the parody of it all. Matt Stone and Trey Parker never, ever play to the comedy of this scenario. Instead, they play to the seriousness of it. Again, this falls under the realm of treating the absurd as if it is incredibly normal, and this juxtaposition is an absolute delight to observe. In the final moments of the episode, Randy returns to the baseball game. By this time, we have a concrete understanding of what is about to happen, and we are 100% on board with it. This entire episode has brought us surprisingly new behaviors from a character we've been familiar with for years, and because they've mapped them over this underdog tale of a drunken brawl, we know exactly where the story is going and are along for the ride. The final fight ensues and weaves itself in as a loophole that will provide the South Park baseball team with the loss necessary to not have to play baseball anymore. This sequence has become mimetic as of late with the I didn't hear no bell making its way into meme culture, but it's for a good reason. This is a pitch-perfect parody to the point of directly referencing Rocky and the Karate Kid. By the end of the episode, we all share Stan Marsh's exact feelings towards his father. Dad! You're the greatest! After the losing edge, Randy Marsh has gone on to create some of the most hilarious moments in the show's history. He became the world's greatest home chef, survived a guinea pig apocalypse, saved the world of Warcraft, and started his own marijuana farm. But none of these amazing concepts would have been made possible without the discoveries that were made in the exploration of his character in The Losing Edge. This episode took a character who was normally serving the show as a grounding tool for the inherent craziness that South Park consistently creates in their narratives and threw him right next to Homer Simpson and Peter Griffin in the conversation of who the greatest cartoon dad of all time might actually be. It took almost a decade of storytelling to find Randy Marsh's voice on the show, but once it was found, it opened up a world of possibilities. Not just for Randy, but the entire Marsh family. Normally in a cartoon, the family dynamics are well established within the first two or three episodes. But in the case of Randy Marsh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker took their time in lining his character up before taking the shot that they did. The Randy Marsh we currently get to enjoy was developed through a measured approach to character development that you just don't see that often in the cartoon world. And it doesn't seem like they plan on stopping his development anytime soon. I'm, I'm so startled. <laughs> That's it for today's episode. Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, there are a couple of links in the player window to some of our other content, so just feel free to click on those if you'd like to stick around. And thanks for watching Nerdstalgic. 